Welcome to the Unblock Your Business podcast. I'm Abby Rogers, success coach, business coach, and hypnotherapist. And I help high achievers and business leaders master their subconscious habits for success, income goals, and above all, happiness. But success isn't just about mindset or strategy. It's about combining both and sealing the deal with a big dose of subconscious alignment because our subconscious holds the true key to unlocking our potential. Let's dive in and look at how you can show up bigger, better and more uniquely aligned in life and business today. Hi, welcome to today's episode of the Unblock Your Business podcast. So today we are going to be looking at why your ideal client isn't always as important as you think. Ideal client is, I know, built up to be a huge thing in many, many kind of marketing and coaching packages and in lots of the free advice you see out there um, about how to get more clients. It's like, this is the first thing you've got to do before you're ever going to get clients in your business. And in the early stages of my business, I was hearing this consistent message, define your ideal client before anything else. Then when you know who you're targeting, you can work out the offers to suit them. And I was also hearing, well, if your offers aren't selling, it's because you don't have your ideal client defined properly. So it was like, this is the key to the gate. This is the thing that's going to get your business taking off. Not necessarily so. So I spent so much time thinking about this and I had a pretty good idea in my mind of who I wanted to work with. But every time I put a post out there and my services didn't sell, I would go back to wrestling with my ideal client again and again, because I was hearing this message and thinking I must be doing something wrong. So oh, all sorts of thoughts going around in my mind, like, am I not talking in their language? Am I being too nice? Am I being the other way? Am I being too aggressive and too bullshit? Am I putting my clients off with some of my posts? Am I coming across as too salesy? Am I coming across as being money obsessed because I talk a lot about money mindset? Um, Do they think I'm just like all the other coaches out there? Am I looking in the wrong place for them? Do I have a Facebook group that's in fact full of all the wrong people? Have I wasted all this time building this group? Um, Am I attracting people at the wrong stage of their journey? Do I need to be targeting people who've been struggling for a long time rather than people who are brand new in business? Is my content appealing to people who just aren't ready to invest? Do I need to adjust my messaging? Do I need to completely rewrite my website? Ah, on and on and on, all this stuff going around in my mind. Why is my client not buying? Guess what? (laughs) After agonizing over this and aligning everything in my business with this perfect ideal client, to the nth degree and beating myself up for months over not having it quite right yet because obviously that must be what was wrong if my programs still weren't selling. Something just snapped and I thought, no, I'm not going to do this anymore. There, There must be something else to this. So I started doing things differently and suddenly started seeing results. Hooray! Which was pretty much literally an overnight change and a very welcome one, I can tell you. So knowing who your ideal client is doesn't automatically mean that you're going to be able to sell your services to them or that you're going to come up with the right services. Just let that statement sink in for a moment. And I'd just like you to think about for a moment um, skincare as an example. So if we look at the demographics for skincare. I am probably the perfect ideal client for luxury skincare brands like Clarins, like Lancome, like Elizabeth Arden. And sadly, I'm edging towards that target demographic now for the anti-aging serums, lotions and potions. I don't look a day older than my 29 years, I know, (coughs) plus a few. But um, no matter how perfect a match for the ideal client I am for these brands, I'm never going to be interested in buying their stuff. Why is that? Well, it's because I just don't care about the outcome. (gasps) Shocking, I know, throw your hands up. (laughs) But basically, it just doesn't bother me as much as it needs to bother me for me to invest in their brands. Um, And that's 
because it's not about who I am and what boxes I happen to fit into. And it's not even to do with my situation in life right now or my age. It's nothing to do with whether I've drunk a few too many bottles of wine in my life. Definitely have. Uh, Whether I've been ravaged by child-induced sleep deprivation. Also definitely have. It's not about what magazines I read. It doesn't matter whether I read Red Magazine. Sometimes, yep, now and then. There you go, Red Magazine, there's a plug. Um, Or Tatler or OK. (laughs) Not unless I'm desperate and in the hairdressers. And all those things just really don't matter because it isn't about who something is for. It's about what matters to those people and that is a really different kettle of fish. So it's all about the what rather than the who. So what can you do for them? How can you help them? Hopefully that is making sense so far. So I would love you instead of thinking so hard about exactly who your ideal client is to try focusing instead on what it is that they want to achieve in their lives. What is it? What's that specific outcome that you can provide and why does it really matter to them? So important. So with my one-to-one clients, we break this down now using a six-step process to really get clear on what's known as the psychographics, the emotional drivers. Um, And that's because we do buy with emotion. We are emotional creatures, right? So it's all about personality, values. It's not about demographics. Doesn't matter. So the what, as we've said, is a huge part of the picture. You need to be selling something that appeals to people's emotional needs, not just what you think they need. The other thing that you really need to get clear on is your values, who you are. So often we think that selling is all about the client and it's not. It's about the connection the client feels with you or with your product. Connection, it's all about that. It's about that emotion again. Just think about for a moment why you choose one brand over another. It's because it reminds you of the things you value. You buy sturdy, trusty underwear from companies in the UK. We have M&S because we know that they value quality. We buy from certain brands because they are ethical and sustainable. We'll pay more for the same product because they're ethical and sustainable. That's a really important value for a lot of people nowadays. Um, And we buy things that tie in with our values and really press our happy buttons. And that's why it's so important to be you and to know your values and tell your story and press those happy buttons for your clients because they really connect with that. We, We don't buy with logic. We buy from people that we like. So just think about what you bring to the table first and foremost. What most of us do is we start working out this ideal client and then thinking that we've got to behave in a certain way to impress them or filter ourselves so that we don't upset them. We have this perfect ideal client on a pedestal in our minds. So we start treading on eggshells all the time and putting out this super filtered, super safe messaging so as not to offend anyone. And by screening ourselves in that way, we actually start to appeal to no one. So I would love you to flip that around today and just start putting yourself out there into the world as you are, not what you think your ideal client wants. Very, very different thing. Um, Because at the end of the day, you are your unique selling point. You are what's unique about your business. And if you do that, you're just going to magnetize those wonderful dream clients to you. You won't attract everybody because you don't need to attract everybody. You don't want to attract everybody, but the people that really get you will really, really get you. So when I did these two things, when I focused on the what and I focused on me, I found that my ideal clients found me, which was fantastic. (laughs) I didn't have to go searching for them. I just created something that I knew people needed and put myself out there as me, warts and all. Do that and the right people will be attracted into your world. So does ideal client matter at all? Yes, it's a really important piece of the puzzle, but it's definitely not the whole puzzle and it doesn't have to be the first piece. So let's just look at it in a different way now. If you have a really clear idea of who you want to serve, From the offset, if you already know who that ideal client of yours is, brilliant. Get out there and start talking to them in your messaging because there's no doubt that having that clarity on who you're talking to allows you to really refine things. But don't allow that to stifle you. 
And once you know who they are, then you can start to really engage with them. You can start to survey them and find out what it is they really need. But the key thing I want you to take away from today is that you don't have to have it totally figured out before you do anything in your business and before you start selling those services. Sometimes it is only by actually putting things out into the world that you can start to work out who it benefits the most and who you want to work with. Sometimes you've got to put the cart before the horse. Um, And that's so important because this is your business after all. And what you want is clients you are going to love working with not clients that you feel you've got to stick with because that's what you sat down and defined on day one when you were doing the ideal client um, workbook or whatever. Um, So, so often I'll just see people feeling like they can't launch anything until everything's done, until they've got their website perfect for, for their ideal client, they've got their sales page, they've got very specific programs. But the truth is sometimes it's just too soon to really know who that is for. So, you can be scrappy, you can just just start getting stuff out there, even if it's not perfect, even if that person's not perfectly defined, as long as you know what you're offering, and then you can work backwards from there. So there's no rule book that says you have to do things a certain way. And that is something to really bear in mind. I now have several different clients for the various things I do in my business. And I really love working that way. It keeps it interesting for me. So I've got my one-to-one mindset for business clients and one-to-one business coaching clients. I've got my membership, got my group program, got my business basics program coming up soon. And they're all different ideal clients. They're all different people at different stages of their journey with different needs. And there may be some similarities. There's often some overlap there, but I love working with them all and that's okay. And they don't have to fit this perfect, uh, beautiful little box that's been created by me. So you're allowed to evolve. Your ideal client's allowed to evolve. You're allowed to change. You're allowed to do whatever you like. It's your business. And, uh, I would just say on that note, if you are thinking of doing more than one thing, maybe just take it slowly. I do one thing first and then start building things out from there. Focus really gets you further. So if you can just do one thing and make that amazing first, um, then in later months, you can start to build out other stuff. But don't feel like you've got to stick with the first thing you decide forever. So I hope that has been insightful and uh, I hope for some of you it's really helped you move off that ideal client stumbling block Um, because for me it was such a relief when I just put that to one side and said I don't have to focus on that anymore. So um, yeah, let me know if that's the case for you. If you're interested in learning more about business strategy and sales psychology, then um, you can join my new free group over on Facebook. I still have the Unblock Your Business group, which is wonderful and full of lots of entrepreneurs working on their mindset. But I have a new group, which is more for um, therapists, coaches, service-based business owners who are just feeling overwhelmed with all the business stuff, the marketing, the running a business, and really just want to get clients in their business. So that new free group is called Build a Thriving Wellbeing Business. Just type that into the search bar on Facebook and um, look for me and you should see me popping up there with a lovely orange background, I think it is. So um, I would love to welcome you to that group if you want a little bit more business support. So um, hopefully see you there and see you next week. Take care. Thanks for listening. I really hope you've enjoyed today's episode. If you have, it would be incredible if you could pop a review on iTunes, Google, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform. And if you want to dive deeper, you can find me in my Facebook group, Unblock Your Business, or at www.unblockyourbusiness.com.